All right, and we are back today with another one, uh, giving you guys an opportunity to really learn about these 2024 recruits in this cycle. And today I am joined by the wide receiver out of Denton Geyer High School, which for all you Oklahoma fans, I know you guys are familiar with that place, uh, Josiah Martin. Hey, how are you doing today? I'm doing well. I'm doing well. How about yourself? You know, I'm doing good. Uh, wrapped up another day of work. It's uh, halfway through the week, almost to yeah. a Friday. So. Almost. Got a day. Almost. Almost. <laughs> Can't get here fast enough. No, sir. So, listen, I'm going to start off with the question. The question everybody wants to know. In 2024, where are you going to play football? You know, I can't even answer that. So, I mean, shoot, y'all guess is as good as mine right now. <laughs> all right, all right. Well, hey, you've got an elite list of offers, which we're going to get into here in a minute. But um, we're going to start off the interview with a little bit of a funny question, uh, a little bit of an icebreaker. If you could be any animal, what would you be? Ooh, any animal? Any animal. Okay. I don't definitely don't want to be a prey. I don't want to be the prey in, in any uh, area of I have. I probably have to say, either an elephant, because nobody really picks on elephants, or or a chameleon, because you know they they um they can blend in any in any um you know color they can blend in any color in any environment to to hide from their prey. I like chameleons. I like that. Yeah. So they're not okay. necessarily they're not necessarily uh praised, but they're not. Instead of predators, so they're like in between. Okay, I like that answer. Now you talked about the elephant, which, yeah, I mean, uh, it's it's an animal that's kind of big, hard to mess with. Uh, Did you see that scientists are trying to uh, de-extinct the woolly mammoth de-extinct. by bringing them back? I I didn't see that. I never. What? Are you serious? Yeah, no, I'm I'm being serious. Uh, it's a but it's called it's a biotech company uh, working on bringing the woolly mammoth back to life. They're uh, thinking they might be able to have this accomplished by 2027. Uh, basically, they're taking uh, DNA from mammoth skeletons that have been discovered with skin in the preserved ice. Uh, and, and they actually have a preserved 42,000 year old ba- baby mammoth. And so with that. Um, DNA and everything. They're doing like $60 million in funding. They say 99.6% of a woolly mammoth's DNA from that one that is uh, put in the ice that they can utilize to revive the woolly mammoth. Why would they want to do that? Why? (laughs) So, your answer might change by 2027. Okay. Actually, no, my answer is going to change right now. So, for future, future references, I would love to be a woolly mammoth. Nobody's messing with them. Leave it at that. Be no, really nobody's bad. messing with them. Yeah. So <laughs> interesting fact. We'll see if it actually happens. I think the next step from there is really a Jurassic World type scenario where we got dinosaurs roaming around. So yeah, I'm, I'm very interested to see if that actually happens by 2027. I don't think that's going to happen by 2027. I, I, I think the Woolly Mammoth thing's probably the most likely scenario just because, well, you have a fully preserved Woolly Mammoth that's right. kind of easy to extract DNA from when it's in ice. So, gotcha. But hey, um, tell us a little bit more about yourself, right? Where'd you grow up? Tell us a bit more about your family. Uh, what are some of your goals that you have for yourself? Okay. Um, I'm originally from Seattle, Washington. Um, I moved to... Uh, School up. I moved to Texas about a year ago, a year and a half ago, uh, coming up on two years in July. Um, I live with my mom, my dad, and my two brothers. My mom and dad are together, and I'm the oldest of the two. So I have a, I have a younger brother who's in um, who's in seventh grade and one who's in uh, first grade. So I'm the oldest of the bunch. You know, I'm all, I'm leading the pack, uh, setting the um, example for them. Um, yeah, I, I was really originally at Lone Star High School in Frisco, Frisco, Texas, before um, I moved to Dan Geyer about about a year ago, around this time uh, last year. And, yeah, uh, some of my goals, I definitely want to play Division One football. Not only play, but I want to be the best to play. And I want to um, I want to play all three years, um, get drafted in, get drafted. The first, the best receiver in the draft, best player in the draft overall, win the Blitzkopf Award in college. Um, 
and yeah, I, I want to I want to be the greatest ever to do this thing overall, all in all levels, all aspects. That's a kind of a long term goal. Yeah, so you know you want to be the greatest, right? And you want to yes. get to the draft, and you want to be able to achieve all that. What are you doing right now to be able to achieve those kind of goals? Because those are some pretty hefty goals you got there. Pretty, pretty hefty indeed. Uh, I'm studying. I'm studying. I'm really trying to study the ones that came before me. Not only um, people in my position, but like other people, other uh, receivers, or not. Excuse me, not other receivers, but other players that have. Um, the mindset that it takes to get to where I want to go. And I'm kind of just studying, studying um, them, those type of people and um, really mimicking, mimicking my, my mindset and, and trying to trying to develop that first. And then I also do study uh, people like Jerry Rice, Randy Moss, you know, um, people like Marvin Harrison senior, people like that um, to physically to get my, um, my game to the next level. Yeah, now you mentioned some of those guys. Do you have a specific player that I guess would be considered your favorite player? Ever? Ever. Ever. All time. Ooh, all time. Okay. Okay. Um, a, I, I, I loved A.B. I loved his game. I loved a, Antonio Brown's game. I mean, he was on track to be to, to be top five. Uh, um of all time, actually, and receivers. I I love the game. He's not the biggest, but but he sure is the craftiest. And, and and he was he had a lot of intelligence within the game. You know, he 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 was fast. He was quick. He was twitchy. He was um he was able to shut it down his routes fast. I mean, get and get open from any DB. So I say my favorite ever is would be Antonio Brown. Okay, okay. You just be Antonio Brown without maybe the off field stuff. Yeah, man, yeah. Antonio Brown on the field before, um, yeah, before all that stuff happened. There you go. There you go. Um, well, hey, so you played a Denton Geyer, and I got to ask the question because, you know, we got Jackson Arnold coming in, mm-hmm. and uh, we're pretty excited about him as a quarterback. What was it like to be throwing passes from probably one of the best quarterbacks in that class? I mean, on any given day, I think. Mm-hmm. any of the, those top five could have been swapped for the best. So what was it like getting thrown passes from, you know, one of the best quarterbacks in this class? Um, It was, it was a moment that I never took. Those were moments that I never took for, uh, for granted at all. I mean, he, he, to me, in my eyes, he was the best in that class. Um, So, so I always took it as an opportunity to get better. And he always made me better. Um, he always made the team better. He, he's like LeBron. He made all his teammates better. He made everybody around him better. He, he led with a, a kind of leadership that's unique, you know. Um, him not only being a quarterback, but a great person. Uh, everybody, everybody can look up to him in the community. So Jackson just overall just he's something special. And in, in, in Oklahoma, definitely he's getting getting um, a great man and a, and a great player out of out of out of. Him. Yeah. So as a high school team, how do you guys prepare for? a life and especially you as a wide receiver right because mm-hmm. having a quarter having a good quarterback like that is the life and blood of what you are able to do on the field um how do you guys prepare for something like that in call or in high school when you guys lose your quarterback um as they graduate out of the program um we we give we give our faith to the next man up you know um without any with without holding back i mean we, we bring him in we love him like we love jackson we um gotta gotta build his confidence, and I mean, yeah, we just have to embrace him. You know, it, obviously, I wish we we wish we get there could be a million Jackson Arnolds playing forever. You know, everybody does, but but as far as next man up, we, we embrace him. I, I always throw I always throw with uh Logan. the quarter, our next quarterback is Logan McLaughlin. That's his name. I'm always throwing with Logan constantly, building that relationship, building the uh, the trust and the camaraderie with him and, and building his confidence and he's coming along very nicely. Okay. All right. Sorry. If y'all see me uh, looking around, I got dogs trying to crawl around my desk and everything. They're just trying to be distracting as possible right now, knowing that I am on a recording. So looking at some of the offers that you have, I mean, you've got some elite offers from elite programs, so definitely a lot of power five schools, you know, just name a few Baylor, Arkansas, Colorado, Kansas, Michigan State, Missouri, Oregon, Ole Miss, Penn State, Tennessee. I mean, you're kind of covering it all uh, from all aspects of the game. 
Have you taken any visits yet? And is there a school that's kind of stuck out to you, whether you visited them or is it just on the conversations that you've had? Um, I haven't been, uh, like unofficially visited any school yet. I've only been on game visits and I'm and because of the football season, I'm, I'm kind of limited to where I can go because of the travel and stuff like that. But um, the one I've been to was was Houston, University of Houston. I loved it. I love Houston. I love the coaches. I love the uh, the, the environment. I love the, the, bas- the basketball. I mean, they got one of the basketball, best basketball teams in the nation. Um, I love the city it's surrounded by. You know, I, I mean, everything was great. I loved it. I loved it. That's kind of what stuck yeah. out to me. Yeah, no, Houston's a great program, and uh, I don't know about you, but I love to go on cruises, and you're right there mm-hmm. next to mm-hmm. uh, the ports. So you can just hop yeah. on a cruise, go on a three-day cruise, and come back and go right back to school. So, Perfect. Houston's great, hey, and they're a Power 5 team now. They're in the Big 12, yep. so now play Power for a Power 5, five conference. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, that, um, I, that would bring, for Houston, that, that brings more um, heavy-hitting recruits, you know, now bringing in four and five stars. Uh, more attracted to the program too so that, that's good for them yeah so now is there a specific player in the 2024 class or maybe even in the 2023 class that you want to be able to go team up with and play with um my own teammate at at den guy eli bowen um great dude that's that's my guy right there you know um, um i would love to team up with him again in the, in the near future um, yeah, I, I, in my opinion, the rankings might not show it, but he's one of the best. Hey, you know? you know what? The rankings really don't start till your senior year starts. That's kind of what right. I figured out. They're, they're going to be down for a little bit. But once your senior year starts and you get an opportunity to really show out, that's when you guys are going to jump through the rankings. So I don't think you're ranked in the composite yet, but I definitely think by the end of the cycle, you'll be a four-star wide receiver because I've seen those stats. I've seen what you can yeah. do. So. Yeah, so uh, we've talked a little bit about your motivation, talked a little bit about the schools. Um, what do you feel like some of your strengths and weaknesses are um, as a wide receiver? Um, I think my strengths is able to um, – it took my acceleration, you know, going from, from zero to 60 miles per hour. That's kind of one of my strengths. And going from 60 to zero, which being getting out of my brakes and, um, and shutting routes down, that's one of my strengths. Um uh, tracking the ball, that's one of my strengths as well. Over shoulder, uh, side, front, wherever the ball is, tracking the ball, that's one of my strengths. Um, reading defenses, I, um, you know, between cover three, cover two, man, you know, um, try, defense is trying to disguise it. I have a knack for kind of fishing that out. Um, I say some of my weaknesses. Um, oh, another one of my strengths, sorry, playing fast. I look, I'm, I'm, I, feel as if I play very, very fast and, and kind of threaten a defense with that. Um, but some of my, my weaknesses, um, off the top, um, I can't, I don't have, I don't have any off the top. Oh, sorry. All right. All right. We'll just go with that. Um, kind of looking at this offer sheet with all these elite schools on here, not necessarily that it's got to be the school you want to go to or or like your favorite, but is there like a specific uh, college that you want to visit and watch a game at on your recruiting visits that you take? Um, there is no, there's is really no specific school that I would love to go to right now. Everybody's neck and neck, really. Um, you know, yeah, that's 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 just what it is. If I can if I can visit all of them, then I would. You know, but um, nobody's really out in in a head between anybody. Okay. Else. okay, so what are you looking for as a recruit uh, when you're trying to make a college decision? Right? Have you kind of figured that out of what you're going to be looking for in a school? Oh yes, sir. So I'm really looking for development. Who they're developing? Who they have developed? You know, um, who, what they're making, I'm speaking specifically about receiver, like receiver coach, what they're making their receivers into and what they're turning them into and, um, and how they're preparing them for the, for, for the next level, which being the NFL, you know, that's, that's a big part for me because I want to, I want to go as high and as far as I can in this game. And, and I need a, we all need, we, I mean, not only me, but like, every recruit would need a, a coach to kind of push them and, and get them to that next level. So that's 
what I'm looking for, the, the, really the development. Okay, okay. Is there anything that annoys you about the recruiting process yet? I know you're still kind of early in it. Is there anything that just you're like, oh, my gosh, I wish I could change this? Um, no. I mean, I'm, I'm really enjoying it right now. Everything's great. You know, a year ago, I have no offers, so – so I mean, this is I just look at it all as a blessing, and I'm just able to enjoy it, sit back and, and enjoy it, and make make these decisions. Okay, all right. Well, let's jump back into some fun questions. Um, okay. Another question that I like asking everybody, one that's kind of been a fan favorite across the board: pineapples yeah. on pizza. What's your thoughts? You said pineapple on pizza. Pineapples on pizza. What's your thoughts there? I don't believe any food should be on pizza at all. <laughs> At all, I don't know what it's absurd. It's absurd. I would never eat pineapples on pizza. Uh, and, I, and pineapples are my favorite fruit, but I on pizza, no. Separate, yes. Pizza, why? For what? What reason? Why? Why? It makes yeah. no sense because you know when you look at the pizza, uh, it's got the marinara sauce, it's got the cheese. Sometimes right. it's a little spicy. It doesn't make sense why you'd put the sweet on there. Um, I get it if you're eating a full Hawaiian pizza, but who's doing that? Oh, yeah, not very many people are. Yeah. So uh, is there a specific song or I guess a specific album or an artist that you listen to where, you know, you listen to their songs and you do not skip them? Uh, Four Seal Drives, J. Cole, no skips ever. You no know, skips? I wait 24-7. I can listen, I can listen to that album just all day. Every day, all day, every day, just all day. Love it. Okay. All right. Well, hey, as we start to wrap up here, for any of the fans that are watching this right now and, you know, they're watching your recruitment, what do you want to say to them? Any fans? Um, um, the, it's weird to think about. Yeah, that's, that's a good question. You know, I never thought about any fans. Okay, um, no, I don't. Y'all don't need to wait much longer. You know, um, decision. I'm narrowing my list down um, each month, so you y'all y'all will get a top fifteen, then the top not excuse me, not top top eight, then the top four, then the top two soon. So I mean, y'all won't have to be on the edge. Y'all won't have to be on the edge for much longer, man. All right. Well, keep us in suspense. Uh, that's how to do it right there. But, hey, guys, listen, if you haven't already, please go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button. Uh, let us know what you guys are thinking down in the comments below. Josiah, where can they find you on social media? Um, you can find Instagram um, at IIAMJ0. So it's two I's and then AM and then J with the zero at the end. So it was spelled Joe, I am Joe. Um, also social media at uh, Josiah Martin underscore. Or, um, excuse me, uh, Twitter. Sorry, Twitter. At Twitter, at um, I, Josiah Martin underscore. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. And again, if you haven't already, go ahead, hit that like and the subscribe button. Let us know what you guys think about these kind of interviews. If you guys have a specific question you want me to ask these recruits, ask the players, drop it down in the comments below. But until next time, we'll see you later.